Anna and Maria Boleyn, driven by the blind ambition of their family, vie for the attention and favor of King Henry VIII. And though both sisters have a place in his life, only one of them is destined to ascend to the throne for a brief reign. England, the early 15th century. Little sisters Anna and Maria Boleyn are playing in the field with their brother, while their parents are already planning whom it would be more advantageous to marry them off to. Years pass, and the younger sister, Maria, is the first to be married. George congratulates Anna on this joyful event. At the same time, King Henry VIII is queen consort, Catherine of Aragon, gives birth to a stillborn boy, which was immediately reported to his majesty. Maria is rejoicing and dancing with her husband, William Carey, whom she married for love, not calculation. But cunningly, Anna set her sights on the heir of the wealthiest landowner, the enigmatic Henry Percy. From the palace, the sister's uncle, Thomas Howard, arrives and suggests to their father that they quickly find a suitable relative to place in the king's path. After all, King Henry will need to find comfort in the arms of a mistress. According to Thomas Boleyn, Anna is a better contender than even himself to be the king's mistress. She is a girl who loves purely, and a simple marriage like her sister's is not what she desires. Maria is preparing for her first wedding night and promises to tell Anna how it all goes. Father and uncle share a plan with Anna on how she can help the family amass immense wealth and achieve a high social standing. And they should hurry because soon, he will begin offering his daughters to the king. The girl is worried that her reputation might be tarnished this way, but Thomas convinces her that once she captures the king's heart, it will be easy for her to marry a duke or marquis. He has already arranged marriages for the Boleyns, and Matiana is worried that her daughter doesn't realize what she has signed up for. The next morning, Maria shares her first romantic experience. Anna, on the other hand, tells her sister that she will seduce the king himself. Two months later, King Henry the Bean arrives with his massive entourage. The ladies-in-waiting disperse, and the chefs hasten their preparations. The king is greeted by the entire family, and he immediately starts flirting with Anna. During the dinner, they are seated next to each other. The next day, a hunt is planned, and although it is not customary, the girl rides on horseback independently, without holding on to anyone. The hunt ends unpredictably when, chasing after a deer, which Anna pursued, the king falls into a ravine. Now they carry him on a litter, wounded, but more importantly, his pride is injured. To tend to the king's wounds, they have already sent the calm and gentle Mary. Cheerful Henry inquires if her husband will object if he summons them from the estate to his palace. In general, the plan succeeded, but with the other married sister. After the king's departure, Mary is informed that she has been made queen. Her husband has found a place in a secret society. It seems that preserving her fidelity is more of a concern for the girl than for her fiancé, though hardly anyone cared about his opinion in the first place. Anna is taken to the palace as an addition to Mary. She is angry with her sister and doesn't understand how she managed to enchant the king in just half an hour. The queen introduces her to her new ladies-in-waiting, and with a mocking tone, she has Mary sing to her. The noblewoman Jane Parker calms her and convinces her that the queen truly has a kind heart. The girl laid the foundation for her brother George Boleyn's voice. To accompany Mary, a servant from her father's house, William Stafford, joins them, and when the king approaches, he utters just one word. Today, William holds back tears. She restrains her anger and helps her sisters with their evening toilette. An embarrassed Mary enters the king's chamber and immediately finds herself in only a nightgown. Henry is quite skilled with his words, and he quickly relaxes and charms the girl, saying that she understands what it's like to always be in the shadow of an older sibling. Mary gives herself to him and has no regrets, the lover of the king receiving her husband. Early in the morning, Mary meets with her uncle, and she tells him all the details of their night with the king. Thomas is enthusiastic. His plans have already expanded. Mary could very well bear the heir to the throne. In the meantime, Anna secretly marries Henry Percy, even though he was already engaged to another. Because of this, Anna's plan to become a countess fails. Thomas Howard, an influential figure at the court, sends the count to his bride, and Anna is sent into exile at the court of the King of France. Such a scandal could harm their plans regarding Mary and Henry. Mary informed her father about Anna's offer, causing a rift between the sisters. Their mother advises Anna to learn the art of seduction from French courtesans to pursue her goals in the future. The nights spent in the king's bed are bearing fruit. Mary is pregnant, Henry is enthusiastic, while his wife is saddened by this news. Consequently, Mary's husband was given the title of Earl. In addition, the family received a series of subsidies and estates. However, George's joy was short-lived. It was decided for him that he would marry Jane Parker, who he found rather unpleasant, to put it mildly. Anna is also not happy, because she understands that the king's favor is fickle and unreliable. Soon, Mary nearly loses her baby and the royal physician decides that she needs to be isolated. 
They turn the girl's room into a cell, but most importantly, the king stops visiting her. So, to avoid losing their influence, the relatives need to find him a new mistress. Thomas again offers his daughter, Anna. Supposedly, over the past few months, she has worked on her attractive character. Shortly after returning from France, Anna Boleyn catches the attention of Henry. She ridicules the French king while praising Henry, calling him a real man. Her tongue has become much sharper, and it seems the king is ready to forget the old grudge. But Mary, learning about her sister's return, is completely despondent. George is not happy either. He doesn't want to share his bed with his wife. Anna seizes any opportunity to flirt with the king. The girl fully takes her mother's advice. At times, she ignores it and even refuses to accept expensive gifts. Only now she visits Mary, and only to taunt her. At the time, Anna blamed her sister for her troubles, and she doesn't care that Mary has truly captivated Henry. The lady-in-waiting declined another gift, which genuinely angered the king. Anna pretended to be offended, saying her sister carries his child, yet he is bestowing gifts on her. Cleverly, she has driven him to the point where he thinks only of her, even though she doesn't allow him to kiss her. The long-awaited day of childbirth has arrived. The king awaits outside the door but is immediately distracted by Anna and asks if he has a chance with her. While her sister suffers, the lady-in-waiting continues her seduction, which only entangles Henry further. In the end, he promises never to sleep with Mary again and not to speak to her. Finally, the girl's suffering is over. She has given birth to a boy. However, even the birth of the long-awaited legitimate heir does not placate the king, and he ignores the mother of his child. Thomas Howard is furious because the king has returned from his son due to Anna. Moreover, Anna has already convinced the king to send her sister to the countryside with the bastard. She joyfully informs her sister of this and shares her plans to ascend to the throne and give the king not a bastard, but a legitimate heir. While the king rides with Anna on horseback, Stafford helps Mary load her belongings onto a carriage. But the schemer doesn't rush to yield to the king. Next in line is Queen Catherine. In a fit of hysteria, Henry demands that his subjects find a way to get rid of her, and the queen is sent to a convent. But Anna wants more. She demands an annulment of the marriage. She says she will yield to him only if he makes the girl his wife. Besides, the queen is no longer able to bear a child. Everything seems to be going according to plan, but Mary, the wife of Henry Percy, demands a divorce because his marriage to Anna was consummated, meaning it was sealed in the bedchamber. The king brings the modest Mary back to the court, only to determine if Anna indeed slept with Percy. Among all the cunning Boleyn family, he trusts only her. And Mary lies to him. She did it for the sake of reconciliation with her sister. Anna is very grateful to her and persuades her to remain as a lady-in-waiting. To satisfy his lust, Henry VIII convinced the bishops to condemn his marriage to the queen. Catherine of Aragon agrees to a trial, but only if the judge is the pope himself. If the king dissolves their union without the pope's involvement, he will break ties with the Catholic Church. Catherine tries to reason with her husband because his actions are isolating England and leading the country towards civil war. But the king has already made his decision and the guards take the queen away while he storms into Anna's chambers and forcefully takes what he's sacrificed everything for. According to her, he used to be very gentle back in the day. Finally, Henry marries Anna Boleyn, who becomes the Queen of England. However, the victory is bittersweet as the people gather around the castle, shouting and calling her a witch. They love the kind Queen Catherine. In the corridor, Stafford approaches Mary and informs her that he will no longer serve her father and plans to leave the palace. William has saved enough money for a small piece of land and offers Mary to go with him, but he receives a silent refusal. After some time, Anna gave birth to a child, but unfortunately, it was a girl, whom she named Elizabeth. While the queen was carrying a child, Henry was already having an affair with another lady-in-waiting, Jane Seymour. The girl lost sleep and was constantly stressed because all that was required of her was to give birth to a boy. She threw tantrums at her husband and to her relatives. She confessed that he no longer excited her at night. But after some time, Anna became pregnant again. Thomas Howard realized that if the pregnancy didn't result in a boy, then the entire Boleyn family and those associated with them would disappear. So he arranged Jane Parker for her. Anna was plagued by nightmares, and she sent the pages to take her sister away. And then she realized she had a miscarriage. Anna panicked and demanded that her relatives dispose of the dead fetus. The queen didn't tell Henry that she had decided to give birth, but it wouldn't be possible anymore because the king would no longer share her bed to avoid harming the baby. The mad woman demanded her brother's burial because it was her last chance. And with a heavy heart, George agrees. Jane Parker, who was preparing a bed in the same room, finds out about it. But George ultimately abandons the sinful affair. 
Shocked by such events, Mary quickly packs her things and leaves the castle just as Jane arrives to meet the king. In the morning, Henry calls his wife a witch and orders the guards to apprehend her. George has also been arrested and thrown into the dungeon. Anna appears before the court. Among the judges is her uncle Thomas Howard and her former fiancé Percy. The queen is accused of adultery and, in the process, seducing her by the devil. Anna claims to have purely sisterly feelings for George, but the court convicts her unanimously. Amid the cries and curses, George is led to the scaffold and his head is roughly placed on the block. His prayer is interrupted by the executioner, who swiftly beheads the man. Mary rushes to the palace as quickly as possible, begging the king to spare her sister and secretly send her into exile. Afterward, they allow her to meet Anna. Mary reassures her sister because the king has given her his word to spare her. Nevertheless, Anna asks her sister to take care of her daughter or the will. The queen's executioner remains silent throughout. Anna holds back tears and tries to maintain her dignity. During her speech, she speaks of Henry's generosity. At that moment, Mary receives a note. The king is ready to spare her. But, as Mary steps out of the shadow of her sister, Anna realizes that her time has come. She removes her headpiece and bares her neck. Tears stream down her face. One swift swing of the executioner's axe, and Anna's head rolls onto the scaffold. Mary returns to the castle and takes Anna's little daughter, or the will. Thomas Boleyn, in disgrace, died two years later. Thomas Howard was soon imprisoned. In the future, his son, grandson, and great-grandson were executed for treason. Mary married William Stafford, and a strong male heir, whom Henry had so eagerly desired, was born. As for Anna's red-haired daughter, Elizabeth, who ruled England for 45 years.